Hello, my name is Keith Hurst and I'm an Associate Dean in our school here at Teesside University and it's my pleasure today to be talking to Stephen Fletcher who is a Principal Lecturer in the Department of Education and Social Work. Thanks for being here Stephen. No um, problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and ask you a few questions of the sorts of things that crop up at open days. You know, you and I have done a lot of open days over the yeah. years. We get asked a range of questions and we'll just try and pick some of them out yeah. and see if you can help us think them through, okay? Um, so the first thing I'd like to ask you about is your department's got a lot of different courses in the education portfolio. Um, could you try and give, give me and a potential applicant some idea about why I would apply for a particular one and what some of the differences are between them? So we have um, three education undergraduate courses okay. that offer plenty of um, different scope for someone coming onto the course who maybe might not be quite sure what it is they want to do but there's a broad range of modules that they would study and that would help them to specialise in something. So for example we have undergraduate degrees in education, one called education studies, yeah. one called childhood and youth studies yeah. and one called early childhood studies. So the early childhood studies course, that would support someone who was wanting to work with um, very young children, yeah. up to around about the age of seven or eight. Um, and we have a variety of different modules that would take someone through um, how to support someone at a very young age and how to care for them and, and help them with all the different learning that there might be taking place at, at around those times and at, at that age. But we also look at how someone might um, develop in an educational sense, which is one of the, the main themes that runs across every module. Yeah. It's just that education side of things with those very young people and what can we do to really try and stimulate their thinking. Mm -hmm. And our, our team who teach on that course have a, a really wide range of experience um, in publications and they are so, um, the support that they provide and the care they provide is, is you know, they model that. They yeah. model how to support someone and help someone and guide someone through yeah. with our students that I think is, is a really nice way of um, supporting students to be able to do that when they're out possibly on a placement sure. or once they qualify from the course to yeah. in, in their role. Could you just tell me what you mean by modelling there, Stephen? Yeah, so modelling is something that we try and do in an educational sense on our courses in that we'll try and teach in a certain way and model certain behaviours in the classroom and model certain practices to try and support our students so that our students whilst they are learning and they're developing their understanding they're seeing how we do these things okay. and we're talking through how we do certain things and why we do certain things in the classroom. Like a copying thing, learning That's best it. practice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. So those, those three um, key courses that you mentioned in the education part mm -hmm. of your department, um, if, if somebody came to an open day and they were really unsure about what they wanted to do. It sounded a little bit as though it might depend on the age of children and young people that they wanted yeah. to work with. Yeah. Is it as simple as that or is it a bit more complicated? So um, it's, there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's a nice way of, that's a nice starting point to think of the age range. So okay. up to around, between the ages of seven or eight and up to that age range, that's where you'd be wanting to maybe look at our um, early childhood studies course. Okay. Um, when you're looking at the kind of seven to around about 18, then you might be looking at our um, Childhood and Youth Studies course. Oh, okay. So the age range is a little bit different there, but the other thing that's brought into the Childhood and Youth Studies course is working with young people outside of a school classroom right. in a less traditional learning environment. Okay. So for example, um, we have lots of um, local organisations who will support young people outside of school and um, through various different youth work support schemes and we have really close links with those. So a student who 
is studying on our childhood and youth course, they would be able to have access to those um, right. organisations. Um, so although the age range is a little bit different, there's also the youth element that we look at in there and outside of the school system. I see, okay. So it's not just about people who want to be teachers then by the sound of it. I know something that's um, currently in the news is around social work, which we're mm -hmm. going to come to in mm -hmm. a moment, but how people who, who work in areas like education and social work, they call it multi-agency yeah. work, don't they? Yeah. So we're going to talk about social work and we're going to talk about teaching, but are there other types of careers that people can go into who do things like education studies, mm -hmm. childhood and youth studies, who are thinking, well, I'm interested in that, mm -hmm. but they know that they're not wanting to be a teacher. Is it still relevant or is it just going to be a waste of time? Oh, it's, yeah, we think that it is um, still so relevant because some of the, the knowledge and understanding that you develop from our courses in education can set you um, up really well for other roles that um, might have some subtle links to, um, to teaching. So for example, we have um, students who progress from our courses and work um, in schools but doing some um, library support within the schools or within colleges. But some of those students have went on to um, work in schools as teaching assistants or go into a college yeah. as teaching assistants as well. Um, as for our youth work, some of the students who've qualified from our course, they have moved on and worked with some of our local organisations, local councils, um, in something that is very similar to social work and, and going out there and working with young people and trying to re-engage young people into education. Okay. Um, and they've found that that kind of support um, oh sorry, the, the skills that they learn on our courses and the understanding they get around education is really useful in trying to support young people in the region trying to re-engage with education because you're able to talk around those different things that happen in school and why certain young people when they are disengaging with school why that might be the case. We found that some of our graduates who do go into the more youth orientated job roles are so well equipped to be able to nurture and support those young people who do feel a little bit disengaged with the education system and support them to re-engage in that. Great, thank you. So we'll just stick with one more question about the education courses um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. If somebody started on one of the education courses, and this sometimes happens, doesn't it? They, they start, mm -hmm. they might either think, I definitely want to be doing this because of a particular job, or they may even think, I'm not actually sure what I want to do. The things that we've spoken about so far have very much been around education. If somebody has a complete change of mm -hmm. heart across the degree, which does mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. happen, are they still gonna get skills and experiences in their learning with us that are relevant to the wider workforce? Absolutely, I think one of the, the, the key aspects that runs throughout all of our modules across all of our education courses is, um, is critical thinking and we um, are really keen to develop critical thinkers within our courses and I think that those skills that are developed around um, being able to analyse data, being able to consider different points of view, being yeah. open to considering those different points of view and also changing your mind. Yeah. We think that those skills that are developed that don't necessarily link to developing knowledge of education, it's about them, the, the student themselves and being able to see things differently, being um, adaptable, yeah. being able to um, problem solve as well. So we think that those skills that are developed dur during the course are something that will really put one of our students in good stead if they were to step away from Great. what are the traditional roles that students might take up once they graduate from our education courses. That's great, yeah. We often talk about them as transferable skills, yes, don't we? Because yeah. you can take them from one context to Absolutely. another. Absolutely. Okay, great. So could we speak a little bit about um, routes into teaching, please? Mm -hmm. So lots of people who come to Open Days, they're often thinking in the longer run they would like to be a teacher. Um, is there any advice you can give them in relation to what we offer here? Yes, yeah, so our undergraduate education degrees, um, 
have all been really successful in supporting our graduates into um, teacher training for primary school. Great. So that's something that we're really proud of and we consistently receive positive feedback from local um, employers um, and local training providers around the quality of our graduates and how they um, and, and the knowledge and the skills and that, sorry the knowledge and the skills that they've picked up during the course just how useful and how they are able to start from a, a, a real position, position of strength when they start the teacher training courses. So the three courses that we offer, it sounds as though they're really good routes into primary training, is that right? You don't That's need right. to have done the subject specialism as an undergraduate. That's right, yeah. So you could do any of the education courses with us and that will put you in good stead to apply to do, what's it called, is it a primary PGCE? Primary PGCE, but we, they are also in the region, um, things called SKITs. So school centred initial teacher training, so in which you would be a student teacher, um, but you'd spend more time within a school. Okay, great. And is there anything you can tell us about people who are maybe wanting to move into secondary teaching ultimately? Do we have anything or, or people who work in uh, schools and colleges? Yeah, so we have um, options available for both someone who wants to go into secondary teaching, but also someone who um, thinks they might want to teach in a, a college or a sixth form. Yeah. In terms of the learning on the education courses, are there any opportunities for things like placements or work experience, anything like that? Uh, yeah, that's something that we're really keen on um, supporting our students with because we can see the benefit for yeah. students who do have some experience and have been out there and gaining experience during their degree. So we have within our module, within our courses, um, we have a placement module where we'll support our students to find a placement and then to go on that placement and we'll help them with the reflections as well so we'll try and get our students on placement to think about the things that they're learning there Great. to try and think about their strengths and also things that they need to develop as well yeah. and we'll find that placements are really useful for that and we have really good links with lots of different organisations within the region that we can help our students to find placements in those to try and um, find something that might interest them yeah. because one of the, the things that we often find within the courses is that when students come in with one idea of what it is they want to be and traditionally in the education courses it is teaching but if we can support our students to see what else is out there through placement, we find it a really valuable experience. Okay, that's great. And that's another of these transferable skills opportunities, I guess, because a person is learning something in the workplace that you maybe wouldn't get in the classroom, so that's a benefit. Absolutely. And yeah. helps for employment. Absolutely. And we, we have plenty of support at the university around CV writing, about um, employability skills and interview skills, but going out there on a placement over a short period of time is really beneficial in developing those skills and also identifying what it is that you could be um, wanting to it to a job role that you yep. might want to pursue in the future as well. Yeah, thank you. And I suppose um, it might be worth mentioning at this point that although I think what we've been focusing on so far would be people who are thinking of applying to us who are currently at school and college. So perhaps things like work placements would be particularly useful for them. Am I right in thinking that your department gets a fair number of mature students as well? Yeah, absolutely, Keith. We have lots of students who come to us having um, maybe left school, got a job, um, had a family even, and then are coming back to us to study um, at a time of their life where they feel more able yeah. um, and more capable and more confident to be able to do that as well. And when, and when they come onto our courses, we often find that they're really useful uh, members of the course because of the experiences they've built up. Yeah. We find that we can, as teachers teaching on those courses, we can rely on them for um, some insight into certain things that we're talking about in the classroom that sometimes um, some of the younger students on the course might not have experienced. Yeah. Well, let's move on now and talk about the other um, key area in your department, which is, of course, social work. Mm -hmm. um, we mentioned earlier that there is 
quite a lot of links between education and social work. I think I use the term multi-agency, which is, which is a bit of a mouthful, but the way different professions work together. Um, could, you, could you tell us something about the social work degree? Is it only for people who are wanting to be a social worker? Is that how it works? Well, that is the, the main aspect of the course is that even from application, we're trying to ascertain how much um, knowledge someone might have of social work or an, under an, a, an understanding of social work and that doesn't have to be a lot. It's just knowing that that is something that you might want to go on to or um, having some knowledge around what it is a social worker does in the role. And there are a wide variety of um, of roles and responsibilities for a social worker yeah. and lots of different ways of specialising in that. But on our course we like to try and support our students to gain as much experience as they can whether that's through the modules that we teach and we have a wide range of modules that cover a lot of different topics um, all of which we think are so valuable for our students to um, to develop in so that when they do qualify they are able to hit the ground running yeah. in the role. So are there particular specialisms somebody can study? So um, I don't know, might, might there be a, a way of saying that you particularly wanted to work with, with young people or with people who had um, particular educational needs? Is there some optionality within the course? So our students on the social work degree are supported in gaining experience working with children, working with adults, um, working with um, people who are completely disengaged with school for example, disengaged with college as well and trying to support them with some of the issues and some of the difficulties that they are facing yeah. um, such as um, drug use, alcohol issues there's so much for students to learn about on our social work course that we're really proud of as well. So it's a real wide range of subjects, <coughs> isn't it? Abs yeah, absolutely. Wide range of subjects, um, wide ranges of experience as well that are available to students. Okay, that's great. One of the things that I know we've been asked about at Open, uh, Open Days is when people are saying, well, I think I'm interested in studying to be a social worker but I'm a little bit nervous about the kinds of things that I might encounter during my training because, you know, they, they go on placement, as, as mm -hmm. you've said, um, and it, it's, it, it's a lot of different things to take on board and learn, isn't it? So I've heard of the Student Buddy Scheme. I wondered if you could maybe tell us a little bit about that and anything else that you think is in place to support people who are just starting out mm -hmm. in their training as a social worker. Absolutely, Keith, and I think if I was a student on that course, that would be one of the first things that I was yeah. thinking about. So we try to put as much support in place as we can, both at the university, but also on placement. So, for example, you mentioned student buddies. We encourage our students who have went through the course and are, st are currently studying on the course to act as a student buddy for new students, and that continues throughout the duration of the course. And we find that that's so useful because sometimes a student buddy can answer a question that some students might not want to ask their tutor. Sure. And um, our students have experienced that same thing as just starting out at university, just going on the placement. They've been there and done it and they, we think they are one of the, the most useful resources we have on the course in supporting that transition for new starters in going out on placement. But it doesn't just stop with the student buddy, we also have personal tutors on the course. Yeah. So each student will have a personal tutor who will be with them for their entire journey on the course and will support them with um, any issues that they might face during the course or any difficulties and just be there to answer questions for them. We also have um, practice educators, and those are people who are based out in placement who will support our students from the day they step on placement to the day they finish, and probably beyond as well. One of the great things about the university and the, 
the wide range of staff experience and the wide range of courses that we offer is that the practice educator that might be with a student on a course was probably trained by us as well oh, okay. because we run those courses yeah. so it means that our practice educators in the main have been have studied the practice education course at Teesside University okay. meaning that they've got a raised awareness of our course and our students and what some of the the key issues are on and, the course. And can I just check as a practice educator is that somebody who is a professional social worker working in social work who is involved in the training of the undergraduates? That's right absolutely okay. and based completely in the placement and the support that they offer is absolutely invaluable for a social work student in progressing through the course. And I see what you're saying is because they may well have trained with us, they're very familiar with that. Absolutely. That supports the students, okay. So thank you, Stephen. I have one more question um, that I would like to ask you, please. And um, social work degree, I think, is sometimes called a pre-join degree. And I think that that means it's about being qualified to go into and join a profession. Is that right? Does that mean when you finish the degree, you're actually able to register? Or could you say a little bit about that? That's right. So our course is approved by Social Work England. And Social Work England is the regulator in the sector. Okay. And once a student qualifies with us, they can register on Social Work England's website as a social worker. Okay, so that means you're then in a position to apply for work as a social worker. Absolutely, yeah. and the we our social work course is one of the most successful courses within the school at students qualifying and getting a job. And we yeah. find that around 90% of our students who leave the course end up taking up employment within 40 miles of the university. So it's a course that supports students and really helps the area as well because yeah. without the course producing social workers who can go and support young people and adults in the area, we think that it would be something that we'd struggle with within the region. Yeah, so it can be really impactful for our local um, places and spaces. Yeah. Absolutely. But I guess it's like a national training though, so if you, if you did come to the Tees Valley from, from further afield and trained, the training is still relevant everywhere? Yes it is and across our social work provision we have students from all over the country but also international students as well okay. and we find that what students learn on our course will help them wherever they are supporting young people and adults. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Stephen. It's been really interesting and hopefully uh, useful to some of the people who are watching this now. So thanks very much. My pleasure. Thanks, Keith.